Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's April 28th, 2024. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud Bear Podcast, Adventure Terminal Length, episode number, number 738. Said it right this time. And uh, we would like to to welcome to the show, up where I normally am, West Cub. Yay! Woo! Hey guys. <laughs> Thank you for having me. You're welcome. It's awesome to have you here. That's right, kids, all of you out there in the internet lands. The King of Bear and Fluffy Body Positivity is joining us here at Cubs Out Loud tonight. From a love of camping and sexy men, West Fisher and co-founder Brian Hill created an ever-popular event that now spans two coasts and has nearly monthly events. This man is all about spreading the happiness. Maybe spreading legs too. We'll get into that, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we're very excited to have you here, uh, Wes. We've had other folks that you know um, on in the past. The most uh, probably relevant of them is Daddy Hadrian. Love him. Yeah. <laughs> We're about to do a cross country road trip together. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's very gonna be Thelma and Louise style, but it'll uh... hopefully not. Oh my gosh. That is my favorite movie. <laughs> <laughs> Good deal. But yeah, um, we've been wanted to have you on for a little while. Honestly, like we have to give the hat tip to Hadrian because um had mentioned to Aww. him, you know, like, hey, you you know someone out there on the west coast and he was like absolutely he's like west would be great to to have on so oh we, that's awesome <laughs> yeah he's been a recurring guest of ours i actually interviewed him and bailey when they lived in florida that goes back um yeah. quite some time so yeah it's uh he's been we've been long connected but it's great to have you on we kind of wanted to talk about what you've been building um but before we get into like where things are i thought we talk a little bit about the history of the event, um, kind of what uh, Western exposure is. Um, for those that don't know, I'm going to read a little bit of the of the copy that's already out there for folks. So um, West and Brian wanted to create an event unlike other bear events. Western exposure was created out of their love of social nudity and a fondness of the vacation resort known as CCBC. And it's a 24-hour clothing optional facility with a sprawling grounds that allows folks to uh, create a concept of a free-flowing event where the pool never closes, the fun never stops, and you can really make the most of your time. You can do a lot or do nothing and just relax. Um, and uh, it's a pretty awesome event. And I love seeing how it's grown over the years and what you guys have been doing with it. So um, I want to talk to you a little bit about, like, how, how did this come about? I, I think I know some of that story, but I want you to be able to explain to us. Yeah, well, I... I kind of started out on Tumblr back in the day, um, <laughs> you know, rest in peace, Tumblr. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, it, I, I used to do a lot of naked camping and stuff, and people would always be like, oh, that sounds so much fun. You know, I wish I could do that. And I was like, well, maybe we could do that. Maybe we could figure out some way to let people come and camp and be naked and have that mm -hmm. experience somewhere. And at the time, CCBC allowed that. So... Mm -hmm. Um, the first event Brian and I, uh, came up with was, uh, uh, pretty much a social naked camping party at the resort. And, um, and that kind of just got the ball rolling. And, uh, it, it, unfortunately the city of cathedral city has banned camping 
So the event is no longer a camping event, but we try to keep the the spirit of the original uh, alive mm. uh, as it is today. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a, a big blow to us to lose camping. Wow. But COVID COVID got in the way of a lot of things. So Fair. yeah, yeah, it was Fair. very unfortunate. But yeah. yeah, I it's Brian and I met uh, many many years ago and just knew. Uh, we were going to do stuff together and we went on several fact finding missions to CCBC to, you know, <laughs> see what it was like there. And, and we eventually uh, came up with the idea for Western exposure. Yeah. So, um, Brian was a bit of a maverick in various ways. Um, I actually met Brian and was, uh, met him when I was out in San Diego. Um, those years ago, I actually met, uh, all the guys from six, one night bear cast. And, yeah. um, have you been in San Diego for quite a while? I was like, born and raised. I moved away for a little while, but uh, okay. I came back here in 2015. Okay. So this yeah. might take you back. If you remember the following names, Ophelia later and Aaron higher. <laughs> sure. So I was actually on their podcast, He Said, She Said, way back in the day. Wow, okay. I know. <laughs> so um, that was... Deep cut. They had yeah, podcasts back then? Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I actually went out and um, was, and they did a live podcast show on the deck of Pex, if I remember. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And Brian was the bartender there. And I had been listening to um, 619 Bear Cows for a while. So I was super excited to meet um, JP and Vito and um, Brian and the whole gang. Like it was, uh, and Jason and that. It was, it was really, really wow. nice. So yeah, like I have, so I have this strange, odd, like past connection with San Diego and, and that time. And uh, yeah, Brian infamously was, or well, maybe not infamously, uh, was known for the website uh, King for a Day. King for and, a Day. Uh, had that running for, for quite some time. So I'm curious about like the connection that you two made and how that um, came about. Because I mean, anybody who lived in the area probably kind of knew of Brian. I don't know how you couldn't know of Brian. <laughs> it was way. impossible not to know Brian. Brian was, he was the San Diego guy, you know, like <laughs> we all knew Brian. Anyone who went to PEX uh, knew who Brian was. <laughs> and that's where we just became really good friends was on the patio. He was the bartender and, and uh, we connected real quick and, um, uh, when when the uh, when the the owner of CCBC approached me originally about doing an event, um, I was like, "Well, I would love to do that, but there's no way I can do this by myself. Who do I want to do this with?" And Brian's face was just the first thing that came into my head. I'm like, "Yes, of course, it's Brian. There's there's no question. If I'm going to do this with anybody." It's him. And we had already been traveling and going camping and, and he was really getting into that. Um, so it was, it just, it was perfect. It just, it made sense. So you, you team up with Brian, like mm -hmm. was, was, was the camping social event, the original idea that like, you yeah, guys landed on. Okay. Yeah. Cause, um, we were, I don't know, I don't know why we were just really into that at the, at the time. And uh, <laughs> the idea was CCBC has these big sprawling grounds and they let us add 50 uh, ish tent sites to the resort for a fraction of the cost of staying in a room. So it was like, come and stay for like 50 bucks a night and enjoy this awesome place. And we would just bring in DJs and, uh, fire up the grill and cook burgers and just try to have like this naughty bear summer camp in Palm Springs. <laughs> that sounds fun. No offense. Like I'm not it a was camper. A blast. And... <laughs> yeah. Well, right. right. I was just going to say da David and I are more on the princess end of things. So like, <laughs> like sleeping in tents. No. Well, that's no what was so great. Cause being in the resort, you could either get a room or, have a tent some people have both they you know it was it, it was just i mean it was really fun it was really fun and then at night to hear the hum of the CPAPs as you walk past all the tents was just <laughs> it was beautiful it was beautiful and everyone would decorate 
you know, we talked about theming briefly. Um, yeah. uh, everyone would decorate their tents. And so we'd have a different theme each time and people bring lights and blow ups and, and decorate. And that's kind of where a Halloween thing has become now is, uh, with heavy decorating. But, you know, everyone would do like an alien abduction scene or something, you know, and or just have a dungeon inside their tent. <laughs> you just <laughs> never knew what, what people were going to show up with. <laughs> so speaking of themes, this this event itself has expanded. I think when you guys started it, it was from the sounds of it, not a lark, but it was kind of like, hey, let's do this thing. We'll see that it's fun. And, and I get the impression it was a success. Yeah. Um, and you were like, oh. I think we have a thing yeah. like let's, let's make more of this thing. And so yeah. how did that come about that you like did CCBC approach you? Did you talk to them and we're like, let's, let's do this, you know, every X amount of times or. Um, so after the first one, well, I think it was Saturday of the very first one in 2016. Um, I think Brian and I <laughs> had our arms around each other and we just went, Oh, we've, we actually have something here like this is this is great <laughs> and uh and so we went right back to the resort when we finished and scheduled another one for that in november and we we settled on doing it twice a year for the first maybe the first two years and then uh the resort approached us because they had other bear stuff but it wasn't doing very well mm-hmm. and they pretty much were like do you want this do you want to just take it over? And I, of course I was like, yeah. Uh, so we went from doing two a year to one a month and <clears throat> Western exposure, spring and fall still are those core. Those are the two big ones. Mm-hmm. And then each month we had these other smaller specialized events that were bear themed, but not the big setups. Um, those would come later. And now today those have grown and we have things like dad fest and Mm -hmm. um, we do stuff during tidal wave. We do stuff during IBC. We had a pup event for a long time, Mm -hmm. um, but that's become our, we now do a second weekend in October because our October exposure grew way too big, a little bit out of our control. And we do like a Christmas one for people who don't have anywhere to be over Christmas or want somewhere to not be, or want a reason to not be at home for Christmas. Um, (laughs) So pretty much every month we've got something going on, except for January. I take January off. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's good to know that you're like, I need my own time. Go ahead, Damon. Well, considering doing at least one every month, I'm sure that can be, um a lot um planning yeah. it's a lot yeah yeah have you had <laughs> i guess uh i'm assuming that since you keep doing it that you are finding joy in it oh god yeah no i don't want to do anything else my <laughs> the, the last desk job i had i said when i left that job which I left uh, very classically by hanging up the phone and being like, I'm done. I'm out, you know? Um, and I, I promised myself then I would never work for someone else ever again. And I just, I could not do it. And so when this presented itself as something that could turn into a career, um, I jumped on it and, and I've been doing it uh, full speed ever since. Like, this is what I want to do. I absolutely love it. Awesome. My knees hate me. My knees are <laughs> ground to, ground down to almost nothing at this point. But uh, <laughs> why is that? It. No, that's strictly from setup. <laughs> I promise. Strictly from. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. I had to. No, you're I right. To... You're right. I, I walked right into that one. <laughs> <laughs> or backed into it. I mean, whatever I the mean... difference is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so you so you start off with like this one thing turns into twice a year then turns into like multiple months of the thing and then something i don't i'm i don't understand this part so this is where we where we're having you on is like explaining this something possesses you and says palm springs 
like is not enough like this this little thing <laughs> in ccpc so like i'm gonna start like turning into mr evil or whatever and apparently i want to take over the world uh. and now there's this thing called eastern exposure mm-hmm. yeah so, so explain explain yourself sir <laughs> yeah um we so when I started Western Exposure, I wanted something that was like location specific. So like Southern Decadence, I was like, I want it to have that feel, and that's where we came up with Western Exposure. I was actually reading a uh, a real estate ad, and it said this house has great Western Exposure, and I was like, Brian, that's it, I found the name because <laughs> um, <laughs> it works with like being naked and being exposed, and you know, out there, mm-hmm. you know being seen in all your glory yeah so then it was like you know we always thought we wanted to do it in more places but the more we looked we could not find resorts um big enough or set up in the way that we needed to do it the way we do it in palm springs and eventually we found parliament resort in augusta georgia um, which is now metropolis complex is what they are trying to rebrand it as and um, it's bigger than CCBC and has pretty much all the same stuff. Uh, pool, clothing optional pool, lots of rooms, uh, mazes, adult mazes, pig pen, you know, that sort of thing. And, uh, and we're like, all right, let's, let's give it a shot. And uh, we did our first one two years ago. And mm. we're loving it. It's been it's been great. It's it's a it's a really unique spot. It's very different from CCBC, which is perfect. It it yeah. It's it's a I fun. Could, I... Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say it's like a fun, dirty summer camp. The way we started it, which you know, it's 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 kind of feels like the old days of Western exposure down there. Ah. I think as someone who lives a little closer to that one, I think I personally am enjoying the idea of an of an Eastern exposure. <laughs> and I'm sure your um you know, people who are, are fond of the event and fond of, of going are kind of enjoying that too. Um mm-hmm. and it's only been a couple of years now. Yeah, we're doing our third one. I believe it's my third one. Uh, uh, in two weeks. Yeah. yeah. So the next one is May 9th through May 12th. So the, the big key question is for those that are suddenly interested, is it mm-hmm. sold out? Are there options no. available? No, it's a huge hotel. It is uh, something that we have not um, sold it out. Um, they've got pretty much, they took two hotels that were next to each other and bought them both and then have merged them. So there's like hundred, 150 rooms or something. It's it's crazy, so um, but no, it's it is not. The, there are plenty of rooms available, and uh, there's always day passes uh, and weekend passes available at the door for all our stuff. Nice. CCBC hmm. is smaller; it's only forty something rooms, uh, so it sells out really quick. Yeah, and we're always getting screamed at for not having rooms available. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean. I think the popularity of the event, um, I think, is is just making it why people are clamoring to try to get it get there. Yeah. But I would also say you have it so you know so often during the year, just because you can't get like the big ones, you can always try some of the other events. That's and that's the idea. We're trying to spread it out, trying to make it so that people can get into some other stuff if they can't get into the big ones. And uh, and it's it's been going great. We have our. Our next one is CCBC is in May, uh, May 17th through the 19th. It's like our content creator weekend where we invite oh. people who, yeah, we set up like filming areas where you can take pictures and make videos and stuff and meet other guys who are into that. And um, oh. yeah, it, it's it's a fun one. It's a, it's a really fun one. But yeah, it's the rooms uh, are sold out for that as well. It's, it's great. It's great. I like the idea of that. Well, that sounds, I mean, it, it's sort of, a good way to um, bring in more people and like have mm-hmm. the fun that people are wanting to have. Yeah. Well, and offer people an opportunity to, to do that stuff outside and, and have fun making that stuff. And then also just the fans to show up and meet their, some of their 
the people that they follow online and it's it's kind of it's been a lot of fun doing it i i really enjoy that event <laughs> so about two weeks after the content creator weekend the world will probably see some of the activities that were taking place during said weekend i imagine Correct. for those that haven't connected the dots <laughs> West has basically decided to take over the compound and turn it into an adult film production studio. Like, <laughs> yeah. Mostly yeah. for independent content creators, I believe. But That's yeah. exactly yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> which, I think, which I also think is a smart thing. I think it's a great market and a resource for people who want to explore this and enjoy and, and have the opportunity to create content for their sites and doing it especially at a resort where it's sort of free, I mm guess. -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's going to be places where you can do things. There are going to be naughty places where you can go in and, and have a little scene. And the fact that it is put out there, presented as a content creation kind of thing, you know, like people will know that. And then, mm -hmm. you know, say, oh, well, I don't, I don't necessarily want to be on film. Well, cool. Then you stay there <laughs> <And> this, area, <laughs> yeah. this area is for filming this area is just for fun <laughs> mm -hmm. and and it's great and you get to meet a lot of people that, or these creators meet people that they wouldn't necessarily get to meet in some of the places that they live and um it's it's a ton of fun i don't know i don't know how, what else to say it's just uh it's a beautiful thing yeah so, and then the rest of the world gets to see it which they don't normally get to see what happens at our events because we don't allow, you know, filming and stuff. We have a professional mm -hmm. photographer who comes to a couple of them, but otherwise you don't get a lot of behind the scenes. This mm. event, you actually get to see a lot of the behind the scenes. Very cool. Nice. So you've decided to start taking over other areas of the world. So now we have, <laughs> now, now you're bi-coastal. Yep. So we've got yes. Western exposure and Eastern exposure, by the way, it wasn't until I was setting up this interview and I was thinking about Western exposure and then I was like, so there was never a moment about like how your name is West and it's Western and it's exposure and it's about nudity. Like I get asked this all the time. <laughs> Okay. Well, good to know that I'm 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 a common Karen here, and I like have the same. <laughs> I I everyone thinks yes, you put your name into the the event. I'm like, no, really, it was the real estate ad that sold us on it. It was a happy coincidence, but uh, yeah, and uh, it doesn't help. My I have a gay cousin, Will, who I cherish, and he also does events, and his events are willfully living. So it's Will and West. Willfully living <laughs> Western exposure, and I'm just like, oh wow. my god! Wow, <laughs> uh, nothing like pressure in your family over there to be like, great. Now right? I have to create an event, and I have to put my name in it somehow. <laughs> Luckily, I had a good name for exactly what I wanted to do. <laughs> so you've got these events going on on, on the two coasts. One one bigger yeah. uh, potentially has more accessibility for folks, which is great, and then. You apparently just can't help yourself, glutton for punishment. <laughs> I'm not sure how to say this. I'm not trying to be yeah. rude to you as a guest, but I was like, oh, okay, yeah. so we've we've got these other things. So we're going to pivot, and I'm, I'm curious, because this one I don't really know much about. Guys 2. Guys 2. So, yes. So, like I said, I, I wanted to make this a career. This is something I want to do. But uh, I can't. I needed to break them just doing the same thing all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the CCBC was doing these events with this other promoter and he decided he wanted to retire. And CCBC was like, either we're just going to end it or do you want it? And so we negotiated with uh, this other promoter and uh, he sold us his company and uh, it was, it's called Guys 2, and it's not on the scale of the stuff that we do. So that was appealing to me because I was like, oh, good, my knees. <laughs> um, but it's more broad. There are more play parties, and we do uh, like a fisting party called Deep. 
um, which we've done once now and it was a ton of fun. I had no idea how much fun that was going to be. Um, and then there's another one called Mount, which is kind of like a horse market thing. Um, but it's like cowboys and Broncos and the, the bottoms are, are blindfolded and positioned in a corral and a harnessed and the cowboys come in to do their thing. And, uh, <laughs> and it's just like four hours a night and we build this big corral and put all our equipment in there. I don't know anyone who owns more slings and fuck benches than me. But if someone does, <laughs> I'd love to meet them. <laughs> um, so guys, too, was just this kind of was like, oh, this is kind of fun. This is different. It's it's much more on the side of just a bang party. And uh, and that was appealing to me. I wanted to do something a little different. And uh, it's been it's been a ride. Let me tell you, it has been a ride. And it's neat because I'm meeting people that don't come to the other stuff. But now there's a lot of people who are discovering both events and coming to both things. And it's been, uh, it's been neat. It's been, yeah, guys too. Yeah. That's. And then within that, you've also got uh smoke. Smoke and... is a new one that we're trying. Okay. Yeah. We, we've always wanted to have like a cigar style weekend, <clears throat> but we had some, we had some holes in our schedule in the summer and I thought, well, that might be kind of a fun one to do to give it a try so we're going to try that that'll be our first one in uh in august and we're also going to do our fisting party with that um because we figured that'd be a fun one to kind of piggyback deep smoke deep smoke yeah so (laughs) for people that are following along at home we've got mount we've got deep we've got smoke those are three separate things and then you decided to smash two of them together and make deep smoke deep smoke Yep. <laughs> Are you planning to do a, a, a triumvirate and just do a deep mounting smoke, or <laughs> someday, someday? <laughs> nice. Yeah. Jeff's <laughs> Jeff's like hand signaling. He's trying to figure out how to make that work, but you know, inspired by Damon. Damon was already making some hand motions. <laughs> The the I, I guess the ooh I was gonna ask a question but I think I'm going to wait keep going wait what what no now I'm intrigued so for the <laughs> for the guys to gather I get I think from online I'm seeing that it's you and Gaz that like kind of are working on that yeah he I needed like a a really good showman for the mount stuff and um, Gaz Gaz. Barrington, as he's known on on X, and I have been friends for a very, very long time. And I approached him and I was like, look, I need like, I need like, you know, my my circus master, whatever, you know, whatever that person Ring is. Master, to, ringleader. Yeah. Ringleader. Yes. To get in there and, and give everyone the rules and tell everyone how this is going to work, because there's a lot of rules involved with with that. And he was just like, yes, I got this. And, and I had all faith in him and he knocked it out of the park on the first one. And I was like, all right, the, you're, you're part of this now. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> he, I used to, well, I started bears Las Vegas, uh, in 2012 in Las Vegas. And when I left, uh, he took over, uh, as president out there. So he and I have been working together for a very long time and it, it just seemed right to bring him back into the fold on this stuff. And he will also be joining Hadrian and Bailey and I on this cross country road trip next uh, week. <laughs> uh, so yeah. y'all are seriously going to like record some things, right? Like and turn it into like, you know, an, a, an official documented series or something. I mean, <laughs> oh, we have to. <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Premiering on, t- yeah. on X only. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. We're going to have yeah. a lot of fun. Yes. <laughs> nice. And then I think come March of this year, mm-hmm. out of the blue, I say mm-hmm. out of the blue, obviously we mm-hmm. all know anybody that does organizing stuff, nothing happens like instantaneously. Like there's a lot of planning right. that goes into stuff. Out of the blue, the web is alerted to a new thing <laughs> called Bear Union, an yeah. international sex party. 
Um, and the way I found out about it, Wes, was someone who is in the promo images online yeah. shared it and said, oh, look. I'm a part of this new thing that's coming out. Like, and the best part <laughs> yeah. of it is it's like, it's a picture of them. I think in a sling, like, and I was like, mm-hmm. oh. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, okay. I was like, what's <laughs> this? So then I click over and I'm like, okay. Newest party from come union, body positive. Welcome all bears, big men and daddies, uh, plan monthly parties. And then I'm like scrolling down and I'm like, Western Exposure, Squirt.org, mm-hmm. Sniffies, da da da, mm-hmm. Spunk Loom. And I was like, look at all of these things. But then I was like, wait, 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 scroll back up. I was like, Western Exposure. I was yeah. like, I know that. <laughs> like, and it's like Bear Union is part of exposure events. And I was like, all right, listen, I get it. Like you, like you want to put your seed everywhere. But I mean, man, come on. <laughs> yeah, this. Um, I could give you the the full story on this. And it does, this is where we have to get into some of the sadder stuff. That's Um, okay. Yeah. So um, uh, going back a couple years, Brian uh, Brian was diagnosed with multiple myeloma uh, blood cancer. Mm -hmm. And Brian wasn't able to come to any of the events after that. His immune system was destroyed by the cancer and the treatment. And Basically, he asked his doctor, can I go to CCBC? And after explaining what CCBC was, the doctor was like, you can't go anywhere near that place, Brian. Mm. (laughs) And um, so we were trying to brainstorm things for him to be able to do from home or from the hospital that would keep him busy and be able to put some money in his pocket and help pay his bills. And um, we for we we wanted to do a, a bathhouse uh, bear night, uh, that he could manage and run. Cause he, you, it's not something he needed to be there for. And, uh, we had worked for quite a long time putting that together. Um, and then unfor- and, uh, tragically, Brian, um, uh, he passed away and we weren't able to, to finish that, that dream. And, um, and it was kind of shelved for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so, it, it was something that a lot of people knew that we were very passionate about getting getting started. And uh, the guys who run Communion are very good friends of mine. And uh, Scott, uh, who is like the big face of Communion uh, and the owner, he took me under his wing and started taking me with him on all his trips around the country to meet the bathhouse owners and uh, all the different places he did Communion and for, for any of you who don't know, communion's like a, it's just an international sex party that happens in mm-hmm. bathhouses, private clubs, warehouses in the middle of nowhere, you know, wherever someone wants to do it. <laughs> um, and he, he helped me figure out all the things that Brian and I hadn't yet gotten to. And then this is where the story gets sad again. Scott also, um, uh, he got cancer and passed away a year ago. And wow. again, the project was shelved. So um, Scott's husband, Gordon, who is one of my favorite people in the world, um, was really down. And we kind of started talking about getting this going again. And he just he lit up and he, when I, when i saw how happy he was at the idea i was like okay all right it's time to it's time to really put some some energy into this and get this going and working with him and communion um and his business partner Kyle we came up with let's do instead of us doing our own bear bathhouse party let's expand communion's brand and do a bear version of communion for bears and big guys and chasers and all that where they can feel like they can you know they have that same communion experience that is a bear party and then i'm not i don't want to feel like i'm competing with them but instead we're working together now and continuing what scott and i had been working on and what brian and i had been working on um and now we have bear union huh So it's uh, it's kind of a, a sad 
long story of how <laughs> we finally got Bear Union going. But um, we're very excited. Gary has stepped up. Gary is going to be the one. I'm sorry, Gaz. Uh, also known as Gary. <laughs> Gaz, Gaz is going to be a, a big part of Bear Union and Communion now going forward. Um, so he's, he's really become a big part of what I'm doing. Yeah. Helping me not kill myself running <laughs> 300 parties a year. <laughs> yes. I think that's a good idea. And I think sometimes yeah. that's something the, and I do, I, I was listening and I know it's, you know, sad, but I also think it's a great fulfillment of the idea and doing something very positive um, as someone who is, I've seen, I've seen the communion parties um, often. I think they have been to Columbus or Cleveland. Like it's been a while. Yeah. I've not been, let me rephrase. Yeah. I've not been to <laughs> one, but I know about them. I hear about them. And I was like, Oh, okay, cool. Um, Cause squirt. I'm, I'm on squirt. Just yeah. Out there. yeah. Um, and I just, I think the idea of one that is more bear centric and big guy centric, I think is a great way to expand that brand without taking too much away from it. Right. I didn't want, I didn't want to, I mean, starting a bathhouse event that seemed to compete against them didn't seem right to me at all. Um, but working with them to grow their brand with every, with our resources and theirs combined, it just made sense. And uh, it, it's had a really good response so far. We're hoping it continues to grow. I've got a huge sheet of people I need to contact at some point here, but um, it's uh, uh, I, I'm all about body positivity and giving people this those welcoming safe spaces to explore whatever they need to explore you know and you only live once and make the most of it don't i i i want people to feel comfortable in their own skin and feel attractive and desired and have those spaces to to experience that and explore that however they need to and having yeah. having these play parties all around the the country and hopefully or other places around the world mm. is just helping me continue that mm. yeah so i'm curious yeah. about that west like what what did we didn't talk about this earlier but like what was your mm -hmm. journey that led you to this like mission or like process um because I, I've, I, there is a picture of you. I'm not going to rat anything out, but there is a picture of you. And I saw you. It's you and Hadrian and Joey, I think. And um, I don't think it's Gaz. It's somebody else um, that's in your circle with the event. And I was like, but I looked at it and I had to do a double take because I was like, is that West? And I was like, that picture's from a little while ago. <laughs> um, but I was like, but I, I get the impression that like you're uh background and that and i could be wrong about this hasn't necessarily like been where it is today in terms of like the communities that you have an affinity towards and and where you are but i mean i, I guess what i'm saying is like i wasn't under the impression that like you came through like the 80 well to be fair i believe you were born in the 80s um 86 yeah <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna about to give away like the difference in our ages as I was saying this. I was like, wait a minute. Um, but that you didn't come through like the nineties into the two thousands bear scene, um, necessarily. No, not necessarily. Uh um I have always associated or, or yes, associated with the bear community. Like that there was never a question like that that is where I belong. Um uh I was, I'll, I'll give you a little backstory. Um, I was raised by very different parents, two very different parents. One was a hippie, one was a Catholic. And my dad was, you know, taking us to Black's Beach as kids and letting us run around naked. I never 
had any shame. I didn't know what that was until I go to my mother's house. And then I learned all about shame and, <laughs> and I learned to hate that and embrace just being the chubby kid. I didn't mind being the chubby kid. The only time I ever noticed I was the chubby kid was when the Catholic mother would point it out. And so I came into the bear scene and met a lot of people that, you know, were big like me and, and everything and um, didn't have that, that strength or that upbringing that I had. And I was like, what? Like, I, I don't want you to feel that way about yourself, you know, and, and you're, you're beautiful. You guys are amazing. And when we started doing these events, we had people come up to us all the time. Just like you, like, this is changing my life. Like I, I've never felt so desired by people before until I came here. And I was like, this is what I, this is where I need to be. Like, this is what I need to do. <laughs> and, 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 uh, Every time someone comes up to me with that and and tells me my life will never be the same because of what I just experienced over the last four days, I, I can't tell you how good that feels. Wonderful. So <laughs> so now you've created a kind of the series of events and a sense of community for folks that didn't really feel that they had that before. Um, I I think like it really was kind of an interesting nexus event you and Brian Hill coming together and what's transitioned since then, because like in talking to Hadrian over the years, um, when, when Western exposure first got started and you guys were at CCBC, I had asked Hadrian about it. I was like, Hey, what's, what's the story with this gig? And, you know, and he was like, Oh, it was like these great guys, you know, Brian, like he's like, West is amazing. And they're like brothers and they're putting on this event. And, and it was really funny. He was like, and I was like, so I'm like, it's just a big, like, fuck fest and he's like eh, yeah but like it's that <laughs> and like and it was kind of funny because one of the things he talked about was like the the attitude of mm -hmm. like the event is very like open and does not give you the vibe or the energy of the judgment which i think is what people have found appealing over time and that's why these events have become very popular because i know um having been as we were saying in pre-show uh a business manager of a clothing optional gay uh owned and operated um campground resort uh man the msm they can't help themselves but be judgmental bitches uh <laughs> <laughs> they can't <laughs> and out comes the fact so yeah. you know, like I've I've seen it firsthand. Now this isn't to say that you know all the gays are you know evil or anything. It's just no, no. you can and find not... it if you're not a model, quote unquote, body, an intimidating or uncomfortable environment. Mm -hmm. I guess is the is the way to phrase that. Yeah, um, yeah, and it's you know we don't tolerate it. We don't tolerate bullying or body shaming of any kind at the events it's not to say it doesn't happen i mean you know yeah it happens um but if i see it i'm gonna shut it down i'm not that is just it is not the place for that and um it's it it, it is the kind of thing now that people defend <laughs> and mm. um, when people hear anyone talking like that anyone who's been to the event before will, will stop it themselves you know, nice. that's what we do here. <laughs> and, I think that's a really great thing that like, yeah, if the event continues the, like makes it a safe space and the people there want to maintain that safe space by, yes. you know, knocking those that are trying to yeah shame and whatever out in a way. It's, it's been jokingly called Wes army. Because they will go to battle when someone says something negative online or whatever. They they come for them. <laughs> and wow. it's it's humbling. It's it's really neat to see people take pride in it and um and defend it the way they do. Uh, it's really special. It means a lot to me. <laughs> and I think that you know that really speaks to you know, the quality of the passion that you're putting into these events um, and that you 
care about that because I remember that was one of the the takeaways I had from Hadrian is he was like, like he was like you, he's like, I don't know how to explain it to you unless you are here and you experience it. It is like the most comfortable environment of just men being naked. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And he just (laughs) knew I was, I was being skeptical. Yeah. No. And a lot of people ask like, well, can I just wear my clothes? And I'm like, you can, but I give you five minutes before you're not wearing your clothes. Like <laughs> everyone who just leans into it, sorry for the, you know, um, but everyone who leans into it just has such a good time. A- and it, it's, like I said, it's really fun to hear the stories of how they changed just from walking into that space. I think it's uh, fun to think that that was a pickup line but you didn't mean it as a pickup line <laughs> <laughs> just give it five minutes and you won't be wearing your clothes anymore yeah yeah but you know yeah and i think that's sort of a, a bit a, a testament to the event itself you know yeah if you were feeling a little trepidatious about like being naked or being going full on like you're gonna find soon quickly that you're going to be comfortable you're going to be seen and Mm -hmm. you're not going to be um the word i can't i think word that comes to mind you're not going to be shamed Mm -hmm. as it were and you're probably going to see a lot of people that look a lot like you and i think Mm -hmm. that's sometimes the best part of it absolutely yeah Yeah. i am I think that's the appeal that people are looking for in today's day and age. I mean, like we are all like relatively of the same generation about like where bare media, quote unquote, like had given us this imaging over the years of like what it meant to be in the community. And, you know, and we've talked about and I've owned like I was a part of that in the 90s. Like you had a uniform, basically, like when you went out, you wore jeans and a like sleeveless cut off like flannel and, you know, a ball cap or whatever and boots. I mean, it was just. It was the thing, and it's it's so it's ironic to me because now I look back and I'm like, we're so silly as human beings. Like we just we'll do anything to fit in. Like, <laughs> well, and that you create that image, you you are putting together what you want people to to see you as when you do something like that, and mm-hmm. in a space like exposure where you're meeting people at just as they are, naked. You're not getting any other information about this person other than their naked body. (laughs) You don't know what kind of clothes they wear or how they present themselves to the rest of the world. But in there, that's them. And that's them in their most raw, pure form. Mm. So I'm curious about that. Uh, You have, I think twice now, if I recall correctly, that I'm aware of had outside, um, individuals come into Western exposure to do podcasting uh, live poolside for the event. Um, <laughs> you know who I'm referring to? I know who you're referring to. Yes. <laughs> yes. So for those that don't know, uh, Big Dipper and Meatball have a podcast that they've been doing for a while now called Sloppy Seconds. Um, I happen to be a supporter of them and appreciate uh, what they do. And so it, it was... It was wild to me that they were like, we're going to CCBC and we're going to be at Western Exposure. And I was like, God damn, this man, like they just like touch everything everywhere. <laughs> um, but it was fun to listen to them be poolside, uh, you know, and yeah. do that thing. Um, is that and I'm I'm not going to ask this question about them specifically, but like, is that something that like you appreciated and want to you know kind of consider more in the future like those type of collaborations or like you know are you wanting to come to western exposure and do a podcast is that what you're asking me uh no but (laughs) (laughs) you're You're welcome anytime um but yes i I, we we want to do that obviously i mean we know what's happened recently with Big Dipper and there's, you know, we're, I don't, I don't even know what to say about that right now. Um, but, uh, it was fun, uh, to do it. We did it one time and, uh, it was, it was really great to, 
uh, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know what to, really to say about it. It was uh, it was a blast. We had a really good time. Um, unfortunately, with what has happened uh, recently, um, we're not going to be moving forward with that again. Yeah, that's understandable. Um, just for those that don't know, you can look up online if you hadn't already seen what happened in social media. But um, I think I will say this: context does everything um, mm-hmm. for that kind of stuff. But I, I found it. I was just not expecting that kind of a thing where they were like, "Oh, we're going to do this thing." And honestly, one of the funniest parts to me about the whole thing is that they are coworkers, they're friends, but they <laughs> were trying to figure out how to navigate outside of the work, quote unquote, of putting on the show to be at the event and to not yeah. run into each other, which <laughs> was so amusing to me that they were mm-hmm. like, we, that that's not what we do. Like, we're not friends that way. We are like, as I like to say um, in our area, sometimes the reference is like, are we pants off friends or pants on friends? And yeah. so they were very much like, we are the pants on fr- friends. And it was just cracking me up how they were like trying to schedule, like how they mm-hmm. could, I was like, oh man, like that's, it was, it was amusing. To say <laughs> least. Uh, but I get the impression that's not really uh, your style. And the reason why I say it that way is like, I don't know if there's anybody that you're not pants off friends with. And I don't mean that I'm... necessarily in a sexual way. I just mean like. No, I'm in general, it's a pants off friendship with everybody that I have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, is that like a key focus for you and like all the events and the activities and everything that you're doing is is like that be an aspect of it? I'm asking because I think it it absolutely is, but I don't know if you if you, that for you that is a baseline or you think of it that way. Well, uh, what do you mean? Like the pants off? Yeah, like that that it's like, about like being able to be yourself naturally, either as a naturist, a nudist, or you don't even apply those labels. Yeah, no, I I just I, I think it's it's just works for me. I don't know why. It's just uh what I like, it's what I prefer. Um I've, I I I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> I have never okay. really thought about it. Everyone I know is naked all the time. So <laughs> that's like, just the life I live. Um, no, I think that's fine. Um, yeah. And the reason I ask is like, so when I started working at the, the campground resort that I mm-hmm. helped co-manage, I had never really been to, I never is like a, not accurate. I very little had I been in, in spaces of, of nudity. Mm -hmm. and found that a very interesting experience to see people um, just be themselves and to not, and to like kind of reprogram my brain about nudity does not equal sexuality, like does not equal like turning into, you know, brown chicken, brown cow, like real, you know, porn in your face kind of stuff. Not that that doesn't happen. No, and not that it can't. uh, It's... You know, n- nudity by itself is great. If you want to have sex, great. Like I'm, I'm all for it. Um, and that's kind of why, you know, like when I said finding the right space to do this event is a challenge, because CCBC set up so that if you just want to have the social nudity aspect, you hang out in the pool, you hang out on the grass, you've got those areas. If you want to combine that with some more fun, there's the areas to go and do that and meet the other people who want to do that. So that's where that the idea of you can go at your own speed, you can make mm-hmm. it the adventure you need it or want it to be exists because there are so many different areas where you can have a different experience at these events and pick the pick the journey you need to go on. Right. So if you just need to be naked around other naked people you know you can have that experience if you want to spend four days with your legs in the air in a sling you can have that experience too or you can do both <laughs> or you can do both yeah or you can do both <laughs> why not both just take a shower between the sling and the pool i mean yes yeah, that part yeah, yeah please please <laughs> please yeah <laughs> yeah, because silicon lubes a bitch, and you know, yeah. you... no one wants to, no one wants to film on the on the pool. Like no yeah, one, no one wants to it, see that. No. Yeah, it's always fun in the morning <laughs> um, when we go to clean the pool. Uh, the tumbleweeds of body hair that 
<laughs> roll through the pool. I, when I first saw it, I was like, what am I looking at? It's hair. It's hair. It's body hair. <laughs> Balls this big of it. <laughs> wow. I, I mean, but I guess that, I, I mean, it. it makes sense. You know, you put oh, a bunch yeah. of hairy bears in a pool, like it's, it's bound to happen. Yeah. God yeah. bless your it's, filters. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, we've blown out the pumps on the pool almost every time. <laughs> yeah. We had to replace a mid event one time. The pumps, not just the filters, the pumps. <laughs> So that's your version of the elevator breaking down at a bear run is what I'm hearing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When we, when everyone gets out of the pool and the water level falls so much that, that it just starts pulling air and everything blows out. That's. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. When the pool water is overflowing so much, it's in the parking lot outside the resort. That's a party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they still party. love having you back. They love it. They love it. <laughs> yeah, I guess that was one of the only thing, thoughts I had was, I'm assuming there has to have been a great relationship with the resorts, and that's what's yeah. kind of making this, yeah. In other words, yeah, the resort knew what they were getting into. They did, and they love the way we set up our thing. I'm a very organized person. Um, they they really, when, when they, whenever they have a new event come in, they make me like sit down and have like a consultation with them on how to work in the resort. Cause I've been, I know where every outlet and pipe is buried and, you know, like <laughs> I just know the place top to bottom. And <laughs> so they, uh, they, and they, they appreciate the work we put into it. it I mean, I have huh. a huge team that comes in. We start Monday and we build Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, for the event and we tear it all down in a day but we have you know we have artists who we hire local and bear artists from all over the the country uh -huh. and and um as far as mexico uh who do all our art pieces we have bear pad from san francisco comes down and makes pieces on site for us and um we decorate the whole place with those and lights and our DJs come in and we have a huge DJ setup and it's just a ton of stuff. Uh, we have a huge storage unit in Palm Springs, just full of our gear <laughs> <laughs> and the resort loves that. Cause we, we changed the whole look of it and that's what they want all the events to do is, is just make it a different space so that it doesn't look like it does on a Tuesday night, you know, right yeah. yeah and it's funny because people who only come to the events it, think it looks like that all the time and then they come back and they're like where is everything i'm like no that was all <laughs> that's all in a storage Stay unit <laughs> and with our staff Sorry yeah. About it. yeah i yeah. can relate to what you're saying west i was thinking when you were like i know where every electrical outlet is and da 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 and i was mm -hmm. like when I when I put on a, a a bear run for quite a while, one of the things that developed, we were at our last host for many years, and I had literally made not blueprints, but like planogram mapping yeah. of all their spaces, and then like was giving them itinerary like schedules and spreadsheets of like this is when your staff changes this room, this is when this is needed, <laughs> I need these tables, this many linens, like I was. Yeah. I was like mass level coordinating the things because mm. I just wanted the stuff to happen and yeah, I wanted to. to make sure that they understood what my expectation was. So it's, I, yeah. I got that when you were like, you know, I know, I know their business more than they know their business in a way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was, I always said I have more keys to that place than their employees do. Cause I, I have to I, like, I just knew every inch. I still, I, I still know every inch of that place. And, uh, and that's, that's why they pretty much when I want to do something, they're like, all right, what, what are the dates? You know? Yeah. And they just, they're so great to work with. That's good. I'm glad that you have that relationship and hopefully you can continue to build those in the years to come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Before we wrap up, um, is there anything else you want us to discuss or cover? We'll be including um, links to the, the websites for folks to learn more as well. Yeah, no, I, th I think I would like to mention um, the 
Brian Hill's um, scholarship that we established. Um, cool. Yeah, uh, uh, this year, um, his his best friend Matt Rios put it together. It's the uh, uh, the Make It Do scholarship, and um, we uh, raise money to send kids to art camp uh, in New Jersey. And um, it's it's really nice. This year, we were able to send two kids to. Um, it's called the Apple Farm Summer Camp. And uh, this year we're going to do it on his birthday in August. And um, it'll be for every $50 donation people make, um, they're going to get a copy of Brian's famous oatmeal cookie recipe, which oh. has been under lock and key for years. <laughs> oh but my. We, are, we are setting it free. <laughs> so, yeah, that's our... <laughs> I just wanted to mention that um, you can find it at uh, make it do.org. So I, I think we need to explain that a little bit for those mm-hmm. that didn't know Brian. Um, he, he kind of epitomized, I don't know if he coined the phrase, he very well could have um, make it do, uh, which I believe was kind of uh, a way to say, like, do the thing or, yeah. you know, not make to, it happen. Kinda, yeah. Yeah. To not have a, a hesitation with that. So I'm I'm yeah. very proud that, you know, you guys, um, I want to say Mike Yada and all the folks and Joey and that have like helped put this thing together. I was yeah. um, happy about that. And what's the irony is, so I ended up donating to it. And now Apple Farms, of course, has my information. So <laughs> like, so I get things from them. And, I'm, and every once in a blue moon, like I don't think about it right away. And I'm like, what? I'm like, what is this? I'm like, oh, right, right. Because right. <laughs> it's like it's not a, I didn't know about them beforehand. Yeah, um, I I didn't know about it either. But Brian always had, he, Brian had plenty of fun sayings like "make it do." Um, my ha- my favorite is "handle your shit, lady." That's <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> yes. And of course, there's "king for a day" and all that. But um, yeah, "make it do." That was anytime anytime. Uh, uh, we were working on something that was that was what he would say yeah yeah so for those that want to learn more um, we'll also have a link to the make it website where it explains about uh, what it is that they're doing for those that hadn't heard apple farm arts um, provides a transformative sleepover camp experience where young artists explore everything from theater and music to writing visual arts um, and it's a really great tribute to brian's passion for all things creative um, and the idea behind the scholarship is to empower LGBTQIA plus youth um, through the scholarship. So uh, I think that's actually when it, when it got announced, I was like, yes, like, yeah. I, like, I don't know how else to explain it. Like it made so much sense if you had met and kind of known Brian and and all of you out there on the West Coast. It was like, yep, this is this is the thing. Yeah. Um, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> So with that, uh, Mr. Producer, I think we're going to get into the the wrap up and the post show. Oh well, <clears throat> then if you have any questions about anything that you saw here, and welcome to part two of our two part series in regards to nudity in some sort of way, shape, or form. Sorry for the lack of nudity on these, but you know you do. <laughs> yeah, silly, silly, silly. With that, you can put all your comments on our website, cubsoutloud.com. Shoot us an email at cubsoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361 Talk. That's 361-265-8255. Follow us on Facebook, X, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud. The appropriate place is URL. Please like, comment, and subscribe because that helps us in the algorithm and all of those places. You can also uh, join our entourage chat at bit.ly slash telegram dash col. Uh, and you can find out when we're recording these shows at bit.ly slash calendar dash col. We have various couturements, uh, such as Consent is My Foreplay shirt, which at most of, if not all of uh, West events, consent is necessary. Mm-hmm. Consent is important. Or flexibility for accessibility, which is also frequently <laughs> something to worry about. <laughs> At many of the events at West locations. You find that mm-hmm. at Zezzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. The designs we are currently showing right now were all designed by Smashy. You can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy Bear. Please support him because he's a great guy. <laughs> you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. 
because two of us are going to be in the same city very soon. I got plans for upgrading, for upgrades, and we could use your support. You could do that by uh, also becoming a patron at patreon.com slash comes out loud or sending us a donation at paypal.me slash comes out loud. You can find us on all the pa- podcasting platforms, uh, Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, Amazon Audible, YouTube Music, I think might be showing up there too. It was on Apple, uh, Google mm-hmm. po- uh, Play, but uh, the Google Podcasts is, if it hasn't shut down now, it is in the near future. You can find me anywhere in the internet as Box Set Box, Buffy Box Cub, Box, Buffy or other. Damn it. If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Our most favorite related sites are on Facebook. You can also find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter, our Pup Umbra 79 on Blue Sky. Those are not safe for work. For the safe for work stuff, you can go DMA Gamer 79 on Twitter, and TikTok. Gary? If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. Uh, West, if folks would like to get in touch with you, we are going to include links um, to your various like uh, plethora of empire, world-taking domination Thank events. You. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> is there a preferred contact method if folks want to uh, get in touch with you online? Oh, geez. Um, uh, Twitter or X is probably the easiest way to reach me. West Cub underscore 86. Um, definitely not safe for work. Um, but that is that is one of the easiest. Or just on the Western Exposure website, any of the emails you send from the contact forms go straight to me. Nice. And yeah. with that, oh, forgot it. Step Hold on. One sec. <laughs> <laughs> with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all. Thank you for having me. You're welcome.